Hey there folks, uh, I'm back with a review which is uh, something I've not done for a while. I've done some rules reviews recently on my Friday live streams but uh, this is my first real product review for a while. Just have really haven't had uh, either the time or the opportunity to record but this is a product that I have been wanting to uh, get my hands on and get a perspective on for quite some time. So, uh, so I'm going to... Uh, cut to the uh, focus camera and I'm trying to use two cameras for this review so that I'm still kind of in front of you uh, and uh, and we'll kind of have a look at what we've got here so uh, this selection here is most of what you will get in the Transval Kinetics Merc box from Enemy Spotted Studio uh, now there is one miniature with uh, one head and one weapon missing from this set because I have done a, a quick primer and uh, overspray job on one of these miniatures to kind of illustrate something that I uh, worked out later because the truth is I've already done this review once but you guys haven't seen it because on review I decided that it wasn't fair. Uh, and I thought that instead of sharing that review with you I would go away and do a little bit more work a little bit more investigation and come back and do a fairer review. So uh, you can see what we get in the box. We get four bodies along these lines. Uh, if my tweezers will do the job for me. Uh, this one has a sort of a pseudo exoskeleton on the right arm, nothing on the left arm and a lot of sort of ballistic style body armor. Uh, this one is carrying a rifle which looks to me like uh, an I think it's called an AKM I'm not really up on uh, Russian assault rifles these days but I think that's an AKM um, lots of kit lots of pouches body armor not quite as well armored as the other guy uh, you'll notice neither of them has a head and this third body uh, has no right arm, no head, no weapon, um, otherwise very much like the second one in terms of the kit and pack. And this one's a bit special, so we'll come back to that one uh, later. You get a selection of heads. So the first thing is you get a set of four heads with this design. Now this design is very much a nod towards the um, Infinity, the game, uh, what are they called, the Druze faction in their mercenary factions. In fact, if you'll give me two seconds, I will just grab one of those. If I was prepared, I would have got this out of my cabinet before the video. Okay, so the modern modern Druze designs look like this. Uh, if you can see that on screen, this is the modern, modern Druze look. Uh, but there is a, a slightly older, what I would call a sort of a second generation Drew's look and I've got one of those definitely handy and I've just I swear I had it here a second ago Where's he gone? Ah, there it is This is the second generation Drew's miniature. Obviously this one's not painted so you can't see it but you can clearly see the antenna design on the back uh, and that is matched in this design of head. So there's a clear sort of aesthetic design nod. Now I should say, although it is a design nod, it is by no means a copy. Uh, this is not a pirate. Apart from anything else, you can see the heads are substantially larger than the second generation Drew's heads. Uh, they are a bit more in line with the current size of heads, the third generation, still quite chunky. Um, but I quite like that chunkiness. I think helmets really ought to be perhaps a little bit chunkier than the Infinity designs really give them credit for. So you get those sci-fi style heads. You get a more uh, explicitly near future set of heads. Uh, so we've actually got six heads in, in this set. I know you can see, four, in fact, seven. Sorry, I'm lying. So you've got five there on the sprue that I'm showing you. We've got this head as well, which is a female head in a baseball cap. And then we got the head that I used on my demo miniature. So we get seven effectively bare heads, four helmets. So that's 11 heads in a set for only four miniatures, which is uh, really 
very strong. Uh, I love extra bits. Extra bits are always good. Got a selection of weapons. Uh, so we've got what I'm pretty sure is a Barrett 50 sniper rifle. We've got another AKM. There is a third AKM. So we've got one on this guy, one on the sprue. There's another one on the sprue at this end. Uh, we've got a couple of minimis, one there, one there. And this that I don't recognize this weapon. Somebody will tell me what it is. Um, and then you've got a submachine gun. Uh, I don't recognize the design, I think. No, I'm not sure what the design is. Um, slightly disappointing, when I, I went to cut the one of the AKMs off this sprue with a pair of clippers, and I used, um, you know, Citadel style regular clippers there, um, and uh, the, the sprue itself shattered, not only did the sprue shatter, but this submachine gun came off leaving its stock behind. This went flying across the floor, thankfully this kept its stock. Um, so I've learned now, when I uh, cut anything off the sprues on this set, I do not use clippers, I use a jeweler's saw. That is just how you want to do it, to be absolutely sure that nothing is going to shatter. So these guys are pretty brittle, say that up front. Uh, the other thing I should bring to mention is the jackal. Uh, yep, yeah, we've got a, a tactical jackal here. You can have a closer look at him. So he's got his tactical kit on. You can see his teeth are beautifully uh, printed out there. He's even got a little handle on his back. Uh, and that speaks to this sprue here. So this sprue, we've got a, um, a drone. We'll come back to the drone. We've got a right arm that goes on this piece here. That is for holding the jackal. If you don't want to have a jackal handler specific, you can use this arm instead, which is carrying a bundle and has some extra webbing that straps on to the side of the miniature, which I think is rather good. Uh, we've got a clear flying rod. That is for the drone. And then there are five of these 25 mil plastic bases. These, I'm, I'm not terribly, uh, not, not that impressed with these as, as bases. They're not the bases I would choose. Um, they're okay. They're fine, I guess. Um, the fact that they've got a very, very glossy finish to them. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that in the light there. Very, very glossy finish means that they are going to be quite hard to put PVA glue onto these. Uh, if you're going to use these bases, you're going to want to use some sandpaper or something just to buff that up. Otherwise, the glue is not going to stick. Put those to one side. Um, so, thoughts on this. When I first saw the enemy spotted... Uh, designs, I, I was initially quite cautious because the photographs on their website uh, seem to show that they've got pretty strong printing um, evidence. You know, you can see those, those what I call contouring lines where the different layers have been placed down. There's a bit of jaggedness in the detail. It doesn't look very good. Now, I saw somebody had been painting some of these minis on Instagram. They looked a lot better. I reached out to them uh, and I said, oh, did you print those yourself? And he said, nope, no, I got them from Enemy Spotted. So I reached out to Enemy Spotted and said, can I get some for review? And they said, well, no, but... Uh, and, and they did me a little bit of a, a deal. Um, I have paid for these. Uh, but I, I got a little bit of a, a discount on the purchase for the purposes of doing a review. So, with that in mind, what do I think? Okay, initially, initially uh, I had high expectations and I didn't feel they were quite met. That was my initial gut feeling, was that there was uh, some missed opportunities here, some, that there was some detail that, that just wasn't quite crisp enough, that there was too much evidence of printing contours, uh, and that it generally didn't meet my high expectations. But it was definitely better than the photographs that they have themselves put on their website. Um, so I was, I was sort of disappointed, uh, but that was the point at which I decided that I was being unfair and I needed to give them a second look. So let's take these away for a minute and have a look then, just get these out of the way, at my built and painted example. So, 
I hope I can uh, can tweak the lighting on this so that you can can really gain the benefit of this. So this has been uh, primed, and then I've just given it a grey overspray, and. I have come away extremely pleased with the result of that. Uh, the quality of the detail that I thought was too shallow, that, that was too indistinct, that wasn't going to come out on painting, it was going to get lost under the paint, it has not. It has not got lost under the paint. It has really survived contact quite beautifully with the paint. Um, the contouring now, I did give this miniature a, a very light bit of um, filing with a fine oval jewellery file. Okay. So it did get a little bit of filing, but not masses. Um, and in fact, the nature of the miniature and where the contouring is, it's not like removing mould lines. They're not always that accessible. So I didn't do a lot of it. Um, but... Even at quite close inspection, almost all of that contouring is invisible once the paint is down. And, and that is really quite impressive to me, that, that they have got it to that level of fine detail. So I am genuinely impressed and pleased with this miniature. And I'll point out some details that I think are truly unique to this medium of 3D printing. So this guy has a cigarette in his mouth. I don't know if you can make that out. If I turn him in profile, you can see. There we go. You can see he's got a cigarette sticking out of his mouth. Now that is a finer and thinner detail on this miniature than any resin or metal printing could, could ever have possibly hoped to achieve. Uh, and, and it looks really, really good. So I'm pleased with that. I'm very pleased. That said, my, my pleasure is not universal. Uh, the Jackal... The Jackal is a confusing miniature. I'm, there are bits of it where it's not clear what detail is supposed to be. What's neck? Whether this thing's wearing a kind of coat? Um, the, the detail is very soft around the, the backs of the legs. Um, I mean, I like... The choice of the jackal is, you know, it sort of fits into this, uh, the concept of these guys. They are, they are Transvaal Kinetic Solutions. Look, I even get a nice little sticker as part of the pack, which is also, incidentally, a little bit of a thematic callback to the Druze, because that symbol, although it is a new symbol, um, it is very similar to the Druze symbol that uh, Infinity, the game, has given to that. Um, there are some very, very fine pieces of printing on here. If you can see the handle on this guy's back, that's part of the printing. So we've got an extraction handle uh, down on his side. A couple of them have got this detail that you can see. There you go. You can see on his side that loop. That is a carabiner. There's actually a pair of carabiners on his belt, and they're fully printed through. Um, you know, that's very, very fine printing. Now, these guys are pretty delicate. Um, I said they were already that they were um, not shatterproof. They, they are pretty fragile if you treat them harshly. Um, this guy's got the heavy armor and the exoskeleton. Um, he doesn't seem to have an exoskeleton on his legs, so I'm not sure what benefit this exoskeleton is actually giving him because he's still got to carry the whole thing. But we've got these fins at the back. I'm not sure what these are for, but they do definitely look pretty cool. Antennae, possibly. Uh, they could be drone controllers, perhaps, something like that. Um, all pretty good looking. Uh, I like these guys. If there is a piece to be disappointed with, other than the Jackal, which is a little bit... Um, the Jackal's a little bit disappointing, but not, not a lot. It, it is the remote. Um, the drone has no, no detail to speak of on the top. Uh, so you can't see the blades in the top of the, uh, of the drone there. The underside... We've got a, what I think are supposed to be a couple of pistols, or, or, or submachine guns, or something like that. Uh, automatic pistols, perhaps on the bottom of the drone, and 
again, the detail is kind of soft and, and doesn't make an awful lot of sense that you would mount ballistic weapons there un under the rotors. You'd want your ballistic weapon down here, lower, and you'd probably want it central as well to the camera. Um, there's a detail on the side here. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure whether the sprue mount is supposed to be part of the miniature. Um, and there's nothing, there's nothing being printed here for me to fit the flying stand into. I would have been much happier, I think, if they had actually printed it with a recess for the flying stand to go into. Uh, you know, the drone is a little disappointing. Everything else in this kit, though, is, is really quite impressive. Um, and I didn't restrain myself to just the Transvaal Kinetic Solutions kit, so while you are here and watching, uh, we've also got the Milspec Inorganics Special Weapons Duo. So I've got a guy with a, a breaching shotgun and a guy with a... I was going to say sniper rifle. Um, not sure what sniper rifle that is. Uh, not one that I recognise. Um, but they're special weapons. Uh, they're bipedal humanoid robots. Very nice designs. They're very much uh, calling out the latest developments from people like Boston Dynamics and stuff like that. Um, some of the, the very imaginative artists that are looking at this kind of soldier. Um, boxy square heads, the uh, prosthetic style feet. They've got uh, a sort of very narrow waist, boxy thighs, all looks quite uh, quite near future. That's what I like about them. Very, very near future style. Very cool designs. Um, you know, the prints aren't perfect. There are some random pieces of resin that are going to need to be removed. Uh, but my initial reservations have proven unfounded is what I'm saying on these guys. So I'm really pleased with these. I'm gonna paint them up. Uh, I will get them painted and based and I'll stick them up on Instagram. Uh, I might even do a little bit of a beauty shop for them here on YouTube. If you're interested, let me know. Uh, and they will hopefully be making a feature in a future Precinct Omega publication. So overall, um, ooh, if I was gonna mark them out of 10, um, I would probably give them a seven. Um, the use of 3D printing has allowed Enemy Spotted to do some poses and postures that would be impossible with traditional casting. But as a result, it's also meant that they have done ones like this where they've done the whole piece printed rather than have heads and arms separate. Um, and I think that's a shame. I think it limits the amount of um, flexibility that the hobbyist has from these miniatures. Uh, I think it would have been far more interesting for them to be made as multi-part miniatures. Uh, the material itself is very brittle. Um, if you step on these, that's it, they are gone. I mean, they'll be in a thousand pieces. Um, there's no saving them. Um, that is a, is a bit of a drawback. They'd be very difficult to convert uh, without enormous care. And even as I say, you know, when you're clipping them away from their sprues, you use a jeweler's saw or a craft knife, do not use clippers. Um, that will result in shattering, which you don't want. Um, Oh, I did have one other uh, sort of, yeah, this is a niggle of a complaint. Okay, so I showed you this head earlier. This is one of the female heads. They do have two, I think, female heads on the sprue. Yeah, two and one who's wearing a mask that could, could go either way. And obviously the, the helmets, which could go either way. So this is one of the two female heads on the sprue. Um, this ponytail, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, there is a, let's see if I can, oh dear. It's not playing ball with my tweezers for you. There we go. Okay, that's better. You can see the ponytail on the back. That ponytail does not play well with these high armoured collars. I have found 
one of these bodies that she is compatible with, which is the dog handler body. Uh, she fits quite nicely on that one, just about. Uh, I don't know if she's intended to be on that body, if that's part of the design. Um, but it, it does seem a strange to have multiple options and separate heads, and then have one head that only fits on, on one of the four possible bodies. Um, but, other than that, not much else that I could complain about. So, uh, Transvaal Kinetic Solutions from Enemy Spotted Studios. Uh, if only, if only they would do multi-piece prints and then cast them in a more durable resin um, rather than just selling the prints directly. Magnificent. Truly uh, lovely miniatures and I look forward to only more of them. Simple as that. Right, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you again next time.